Okay, we're in section 27 of the notes. It's related to arc length and speed. Um, we'll go through the uh, lecture first. With the lecture, there's gonna be some uh, examples to get through. After we do that lecture, then we'll do more examples to illustrate the points we're trying to make in the lecture. All right, so I'm gonna switch to the whiteboard and I'm gonna sort of like, you know, I'm not gonna read verbatim to you, but sort of read to you, all right? So uh, let me do a new share. <coughs> To share the screen with my whiteboard. Okay, so where are we? We are at the um, section 27 of the notes, and we're going to do arc length and speed. All right, so you know, as always, I want to stress you, you probably should, you know, make a rough graph of what they're asking you for, and that's important. So, this is tough to make a rough graph, and so you want to maybe use a machine to help you with that. So, you know, the bottom line is that. <coughs> There are tools available to you. You know, for example, we've talked about Sage a lot. You have cell phones, you have computers or access to computers, yada, yada, yada. You should learn how to use those tools, all right? So I'm gonna say you should always try to visualize your problems first, if it's possible, all right? So this is really tough when you're reading something to visualize, but you should always make some attempt to visualize it first, what you're asked to do. So, um, you know, in, in the past, we had some integrals that look like this over here. I'm sure you remember that, all right? We've done a lot of integrations before. So, you know, you know, kind of reading through it, someone says, you know, what are you gonna do now? Well, maybe parametric forms, we've done this before, right? Where X is a function of T, Y is a function of T, where T is some number, real number between alpha and beta, all right? And then what do we do? We made a substitution, all right? So let's take a look and see if we can figure that out, all right? so. What I'm going to claim over here is that, you know, these things may be difficult to visualize. All right. And you should have access to tools. I want to point out there is a picture here and I want to just go to the picture quickly. It says it's figure 91 on page 399. So I'm seeing the picture, this is figure 99. All right. And I'm seeing the picture. And what am I seeing? I'm seeing a bunch of loops here. I'm seeing a loop here, one here, one here, and one here. And this is the graph of this parametric equation between minus four pi and four pi. What I would recommend to do is just do one loop of it. And here comes the problem for a lot of students figuring what that loop is. All right, so let's just take a, you know, a simple number and let's take, you know, if T is zero. Oops, sorry about that. Did it again. So if T were zero, right? And again, just starting at one simple loop. Let's see what, what loop we get. So I'm gonna say X would be equal to what? If I took the zero, that would be X would equal, well, I'm looking at it. This is what X is. And that would be zero minus zero, which is zero and two times zero is zero. So that's pretty good. Now, what would Y be equal to? And let's write this down. Y would also be equal to zero. So I have one point here, all right? Now, as we kind of move through it, someone's gonna say, I wonder you know, how this goes. I think you probably know that, you know, if, if you just wrote down, you know, numbers here, you know, and you spaced it out evenly, you know, I, I'm gonna say maybe minus four pi, minus two pi, zero, two pi, and four pi. All right, I'm just saying if you, if you space that evenly. So, you know, I'm gonna go to two pi, right? So I'm, I'm starting here and I wanna see what happens at two pi. All right, let's see what happens. What do you get for T? All right, so it, it might be tough, but let's take a look at it. What do you get? T would be two pi, right? And again, I know this is really tedious to go through this. All right. So what do you get? Well, you would get the sine of two pi is zero, right? So you get four pi. What would y equal? Let, let's put that down. Y would be, let's see, that would be, well, if you plug it in, what would you get for y? Cosine of two pi is one, one minus one is none. So you get zero. All right, now what's four pi? It's around 12 point something. 
So I'm gonna say we get this loop here between zero and two pi, all right? Now I gotta do four of those loops by. And I hope you realize each loop is the same. So it's gonna be four times that. Let's go back over here. And I wanna do the arc length, all right? So remember what I said, I was gonna do, and I'll outline this for you. I wanna do four of the loops. And one of the loop would be zero to two pi, all right? So what are we gonna do over here? And let's write this down on the side for you. I'm gonna write this, you know, and certainly when I say write it down, I'm gonna write it down carefully. X is equal to times T minus sine of T, all right? And Y is equal, <coughs> excuse me, to one minus cosine of t. And I want to again emphasize what we're doing over here. We're trying to get this loop over here. And this loop starts at t equals zero and t equals two pi. All right, so we're, we're going across the t's now. So I'm sorry, did I say arc length or area? Let me make sure what I, I have to read it again. Oh, area, I'm sorry. I, 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 I should really clarify that. So we're doing the area. Let's write this down. I do my representative rectangle. All right. And, you know, I'm going to say if I did that, what would I get? You know, certainly this would be dx, the width of it. And what's the height of it? It's y. All right. So let me put my integral down. What's the y? That's the y. That's the height of that rectangle. I'll write this down two, one minus cosine t. Right? And now I got to put down the dx part. What's the dx going to be? Well, I haven't written that down yet, but I do want to write it down. dx is going to be two times one minus cosine of t dt. All right, let's write that down. Whoops, before I forget. Two, one minus cosine. And what are the t's going to be between? Well, zero and two pi. But I want to emphasize here, we just did the area of this guy over here. That's all we've done. Let me shade that in for you. We're just doing this area here. Again, I'm hoping after you visualize it, you realize there's four of those. And let me write that down now. All right. So as soon as I say, that, is that enough to write that down? I think it's a pretty good start. But I want to see if I can do the integration. And maybe I can't remember. But let's see, two times two is four, that's 16. Zero to two pi. This is gonna be one minus, what's well, gonna be two cosine t, right? Plus cosine squared t dt. I know these are difficult to do, by the way. So I'm gonna say the first antiderivative is easy, the second antiderivative is easy. The cosine squared, a little more complicated. So I, I have to remind myself, I hope you remember the cosine of two theta was equal to, this goes back to math 120, by the way, two cosine squared theta minus one, or cosine two theta plus one over two is cosine squared theta. All right, so let me go back over here. I'm gonna write that down for you. Remember, if you have a tough time with this and you're on the exam and you're pressed for time, you may want to move forward, indicating I, I, that you can't do what we're doing. Now, of course, the reason a lot of people can't do what, they're, what we're doing over here is they haven't spent enough time on it. All right, so let's write this down. Cosine, not two theta, but two t over two plus one half dt. And yes, I know this takes time. All right, let's keep writing this down. 16, what do you get over there? One half plus one. Well, that's gonna be three halves, right? I'm sorry, zero to two pi. Cosine t plus cosine two t over two dt. Well, I got some work to do over here. 16, the antiderivative of three halves is gonna be three halves of a t minus two 
sine t, that was pretty simple. And then when you get over here, let's see, that's gonna be plus sine of 2t over four. Uh, let me get my eraser out, because that's not belonging there. Erase this over here. And what do I get there for the limits? It's zero to two pi, right? Let's do our work. 16, three halves times two pi. Well, let's see, what's the sign of two pi? That's zero, right? So I'll put that minus zero. And the sign of four pi, still zero. I'll put plus zero here. All right, minus, let's do the lower limit, 16. Well, that's zero minus zero plus zero. That's nice and easy. Let's see if we can do that. Looks like I get 24 pi. And they're gonna be, this is an area problem that's gonna be square units. As someone says, there's always a chance making a mistake. And I know I said a lot to you, there really is. Whoops, I think I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, I made a mistake in the multiplication over here. And I, I was gonna say like on an exam, I would say, geez, you know, I couldn't take points off for that because I see all the work down there. I would say the student made a simple error in arithmetic, but that gives you a 48. So I made a mistake here, but I'm glad to look at my K. I, I should be more careful. All right. So what do you get over here? 48 pi. Again, all the work is down there for you. Again, what, what are we trying to get across to you? You know, a visualization of the problem. That's all we're trying to get across to you. All right. Now, originally I thought I would going to do arc length. And what, why is that? Well, when I read this up here, it said arc length. But now they're going back to an area, stuff that we've done in the past, by the way. All right. What's the importance here? Visualization skills. All right. Let's keep going. And, you know, we're going to talk about arc length now. And certainly, you know, when, when we're doing this over here, you know, it says, you know, my approach to arc length. I think I've done this before. Again, it's a visual perspective. And if you're asked to get the arc length of, let me write this one down for you. You know, if you're asked to get the arc length, y equals sine of t and x equals cosine of t. If you're wondering where I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this right over here. And then they say between zero and pi. All right, I'm just gonna, you know, go through what you may have done in prior courses, particularly Math 120 to do this problem over here. You'd want to visualize and some of those, there's already a visual error. Why do I need to visualize it? You should be able to do that. I would try to eliminate the parameter. And what would I get over here? You know, y squared. I'm squaring both sides, by the way. And x squared would equal cosine squared t. And you'd get x squared plus y squared equals sine squared t plus cosine squared t. And I know x squared plus y squared is equal to one now, basic Pythagorean identity. And if you look at the parametric form of this thing, it's actually just a unit circle. Now, I got a problem though. I don't know if this is a unit circle because they gave me the t values between zero and pi. So let me write this over here. The t is going between zero and pi, all right? So let me write this over here. Now, what do I know about the sign between zero and pi? Well, the sine function between zero and pi has got to be between zero and one. All right. And what's the x value going to be between zero and pi? Well, it goes between minus. When I, I, when I say that, I'm talking about this guy over here. The x value would be between minus one and one. So I think I got the picture of it. What's the picture look like? And actually, the picture they're talking about, and I'll put it in red over here, is just a semicircle. All right. That's the picture of it. So I would be honest with you, if I were asked you that question, I don't know if I'd want to go to integration to do it. What I would do is I talk about, you know, this is fairly simple. And what's that going to be? Well, the circumference of a circle is two pi r. Well, the circumference of this entire circle is going to be two pi because the radius is one, but I just want half the circle. So what's going to be the uh, arc length over here? The arc length is going to be equal to half of that number, which is pi. All right, so let's go back over here. Again, they give me a visualization of it, yada, yada, yada. All right, so, you know, I wanna go to the next thing and talk about, you know, like, let's say it's, it was more difficult than that and I couldn't do what I just did over there. I'd probably have to go to some calculus to do it, right? So what I wanna point out is that in the past, and let me just remind you what we have over here. 
we have y equal, that was the, let me go back, I gotta remember. Sign, right? And x was the cosine of t. And I was the t were between zero and pi. All right. So I just want to re remind you what we did in the past. All right. So what we've done in the past, we've done, you know, we've done arc length, right? So we had two formulas. And I'm hoping that you remembered that. Or if not remember that, you can go back and say, you know what, I need to go back and review that. So something like this over here. Let me kind of draw a picture for you. So if you have a picture like something like this over here, where this is the point A and this is the point over here B and F evaluates to, um, let's see, C here and at B it evaluates to D, all right? So I, I think you probably remember me, you know, doing the Pythagorean theorem over here and we were talking about like DY here, DX here and that was the distance there, D. And we, we derive these formulas kind of looking at that picture over there, all right? Now, whether we're doing a, a differential dx or dy is incidental. But now what I want to do is introduce a parameter to the problem, all right? So, you know, let's, let's talk about that, all right? So if you're given this over here, you know, let me write this over here. So, you know, if I said y is a function of t, you would get dy, right? I'm sure you remember me doing this, would be g prime of t, right? And then I'd get what, dt, right? And if I did dx, what would you get? Well, let me write that down. Oh, you know what? I, this is a G. I'm sorry. And X is F, F of T. Sorry about that. What's DX going to be? F prime of T DT. All right. So let's see if we can write this down then. All right. So let's take a look. Well, what's, what's DY DX? Well, it's just going to be G prime of t over f prime of t. That's pretty easy. So I guess I could substitute that in, right? And I'd have to square that guy and put this over here. And I'm seeing that right over here. Just making a substitution. What's the dx though? Well, this is the dx. So I'm plugging that in. Now I wanna be honest with you, these things here can be quite difficult to do, right? They can be quite difficult to do. We're gonna look at a picture to do that, by the way, all right? Now, when I do this over here, what I'm gonna claim over here, I do manipulate this thing, all right? Now, tell me the limit's gonna be difficult. We'll, we'll get to that later. And I guess I'll do the same example I just did prior. But, you know, let me, let me um, you know, derive this thing. So I'm, I'm not gonna worry about the limits at this point, but I think you probably remember me doing you know, if I were looking at that integrand, which is one plus, you know, G prime T, I'm just looking at the integrand that's squared over F prime T squared. And that would be F prime T. Uh, I'll put the DT here too. I'll put this over here. And I, you know, I try to sum it. It looks kind of crazy looking. And I'd probably do this over here. And I'd probably write this down. This would be F prime T squared. Plus G prime T squared over the root of F prime T squared F prime T DT. All right. So what'd you get over here? Well, you get something pretty simple. And again, our arc lens can be positive. I'm not worried about the absolute value of this thing. So let's put this over here. Oh, I don't need a fraction bar. Sorry about that. All 
I did it again, sorry. And the square root that the bottom is going to be f prime at t. And that would cancel off, you get dt, all right? Again, these limits can be tricky to get. We'll go through that though, by looking at a visual. So let's go over this over here. And we got this, all right? So let's go back to our other problem. I'm gonna remind myself what that was. And that's this over here between zero and pi, all right? So let's write this down. I think we, we did this before, right? So what do we put down? I gotta get, I gotta get the, um, you know, the, the y prime down. And what's that gonna be cosine of t? And let's get the x prime down. And that's gonna be minus sine of t, all right? They've given me the limits on the t. So we're gonna write down over the root. Well, you know, x prime squared is gonna be sine squared t plus the y prime squared is gonna be cosine squared t. This will be dt, and the t's are given to me. That's going from zero to pi. What does this give me? Well, lo and behold, it's pretty simple. You're gonna get zero to pi. That would be one dt now. What's that gonna be? T evaluated from zero to pi. And what do you get? Pi. I hope you can remember when we just did the problem with you know grade school uh, methods, we got the same thing. All right, so <clears throat> that's done over there for you. Okay, speed along the path, all right? And again, I wanna kind of read it to you and we'll talk about it, all right? So it says for an object moving along a path and they define that path as a parametric path where C is the path and it's parametrically defined as being X and Y as being function of T. Let me outline that for you right over here. We know the length of arc, we just derived that between T naught and T is gonna be this over here. All right, let's go to the next page. And again, we got that form. Where do we get that form from? That form is right over here. Okay, let's keep going. And what are they gonna do with this? Well, they're gonna differentiate both sides with respect to T. So we had the integral. Remember the integral I said before was this. right? What are they doing now? They're differentiating both sides with respect to t. So what would they get on the left side? They would just get the derivative of s with respect to t. Now you need to remember the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? And what are we going to do? We're differentiating now. What are you going to get over here? Well, it's just going to be this thing evaluated. What I mean by this thing, this thing here evaluated at t. So all I do is plug it in. Derivative, we got it. All right, let's take a look. And as I put these things down over here, I'm gonna tell you, you know, what X is and what Y is in the problem. Let's write this down carefully. So X is 2T. And Y is one plus T to the three halves. All right, and what do they want to know? A particle moves along a path. I got that part down. Find the particle speed at t equals one. So they want to know what ds is. That's the arc dt when t is equal to one. All right, so I got to write a few things down. And certainly what I'm going to write down is I'm going to write down what x prime is. And that's just two. What's y prime? Well, y prime is going to be, let's see three halves t, I take away one from that exponent, right? And what would that give me? That would give me one half, right? All right, so what are we gonna do over here? We're actually just, you know, plugging it in. All right, let's put this down over here. So I'm gonna square it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the DSDT down. And again, we're just doing this over here. This is S prime of t. And let's write that down. So what do you get over here? The root x prime squared, which is four, plus, again, we're looking up here, 
y prime squared, which is going to be, whoa, it's going to be nine quarters t, right? And then what do we have to do? We have to evaluate ds dt at t equals one, which means s prime at one. And what do you get over there? You're going to get four plus nine quarters. Well, I got to do the arithmetic. I hate to tell you that. That's four is a common denominator. 16 and nine is 25. So what are you going to get? Five halves. All right. That's speed, by the way. All right. Got that right over here. Okay. So distance traveled, that's a different story. And I got to, you know, distance travel is a little different. They, again, I, I, they said distribute zero and four. And by the way, this is the interval for um, t of zero to four. So let's write that one down. This is going to be distance, which is the arc length. All right. So let's write that down. It's going to be the integral from zero to four square root. This will be dt. I think I did x prime already, right? That's two. So that's going to be four plus. Well, I got to do y prime squared. It's going to be nine quarters of a t. Now, sometimes these integrals are really tough to do. This is arc length. And let's see if we can do that. I'm going to make a u substitution. I'm going to say u is equal to four plus nine quarters t. du is nine quarters t. I'm going to make a substitution. And you're going to get, well, if t is zero, u would be four. If t is four, u would be 13. u to the one half. And what's du? It's actually, I'm sorry, this is d, I said I made a mistake. What's um, dt? It's four ninths of a du. Can I do that integration? I think so. And let me write that down for you. Four ninths, u, I have to add one to the next exponent, which is three halves. Divide by three halves or multiply by two thirds. Limit integration four to 13. Again, if you have tough time with arithmetic, walk away. I'm not going to walk away though. That's eight twenty sevens. The upper limit is going to be 13 root 13. The lower limit is going to be four root two, which is going to be four, I'm sorry, four root four, which is four times two, which is eight. All right, so I'm going to, I don't know, maybe I should multiply that out. By the way, this is a fine answer though, but let me multiply it out. You get 27 on the bottom. Uh, let's see, minus 64 there. And eight times 13 is 80 and 24, 104 root 13. All right, that's also a fine answer. Let's just look at the answer and see how we did. And uh, let's see, 104 root 13. Yeah, we did it right. Um, okay, I, I realize these would be very difficult questions, by the way. I'm not saying otherwise they're not. By the way, one thing I didn't do was visualize it. I guess I should visualize it. And I, I forgot to do that. I apologize. Because I always say you should visualize things. And let me point out the visualization. And we'll go back to displacement later. This is the visualization of it. All right. That's visualization of that problem over there. So I had to draw that picture. A computer drew that picture. I did not do that by hand. All right. So let's take a look. And, um, you know, I, again, I'm not saying it's easy. Displacement is basically just, you know, a delta. That's all it is. So let me just say if displacement is a straight line distance between, yeah. So basically what I got to do is, you know, find out what the distance is between those two, two things, right? So it should be pretty simple. And displacement, so C0, I got to remind myself what, what the C is, by the way. So C0 would be 0, 1. I see that. And C4 would be 8. And then what would you get if, if it's uh, 4? You get 1 plus 8, 9. Yeah, so that's not bad. So that's, that's pretty good. So it's just distance formula, or displacement. So let's put this down. So the distance between those two points. And the points we're talking about again is um, 0, 1. 
and the other point we get is eight nine. And again, displacement, just how much has changed? A straight line distance. So it's going to be eight minus zero squared plus nine minus one squared. What's well, going to be 64 plus 64, which is going to be, uh, let's see, that would be eight root two. Eight root two. All right. And by the way, we approximate these things. So there's a difference. The straight line distance is shorter than that arc distance. And that, that makes sense looking at the picture. I'll right, take a look. Next page. And next page is arc length. All right. So, you know, again, my understanding over here is that, you know, have we, have we done arc length before? And we have, but we have not done it for this section of the notes, which we're getting a parametric form now. And again, I want to repeat this about these limits over here. These limits can be difficult. Right, I generally see they're given to us or we look at a picture, but we've done arc length before and that's this thing over here. All right, and then what do you do? Well, remember we have this, you know, um, again, we're doing, sur I'm sorry, we, we just did the arc, we're doing surface area. So let me just remind you when we did surface area, you know, we had a picture like this, we do it, we put a strip down over here and do you remember we had a radius of rotation for that? And it was some function. Now, certainly if we're doing with respect to X's, it would be a function of X. If we were doing it with respect to Y, it would be a function of Y. But now what do we get over here? It's going to be a some function of T, that radius. And we'll have to look at a picture of it to do that. All right. So what I'm going to do is, you know, it's really the same formula. The arc lens is a little, little more complicated now. But anyway, show the surface area of a unit sphere. Well, you know, the, the unit sphere let me just put down what the unit sphere looks like to me. And a unit sphere, I really can't draw a good picture of a unit sphere, but I can do like a unit circle. I keep doing that, don't I? So what's the equation of a unit circle? It's x squared plus y squared is equal to one. Well, you know what I want to do? I just want to do like a part of it. And I want to do this part over here. All right. And then the question is, you know, I, I want to make a parametric equation out of that. And I think I've done that before. Do you remember that? And what was I saying? I think, I think you might remember this. And I was saying that, um, you know, X equals maybe sine T. I was still like this over here and Y equals cosine of T. All right. Now, why do I say that? If you did x squared plus y squared, you get one. We just did that before. So I'm going to say the parametric form of this is pretty simple. X is a function of time. And I'm going to say sine of t. And y is a function of time. And I'm going to say that's cosine of t. Now, what are we doing over here? And again, I, I, I got to emphasize over here, I'm going to be rotating this thing. And someone can say, how are you going to rotate that? Well, there are a variety of ways of doing it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start here. And I'm going to start to rotate it. My question is, what is this point over here T-wise? So I'm going to pick a T down here. And let's take a look at that. So I'm going to choose T to be, and I want to start somewhere where the X would be one. I'm going to say pi over two. All right, so what would you get out of there point-wise? Well, X would be what? Well, if I did that, X would be what number? X would be one, and the Y would be zero. Well, that's a good place to start. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward, or maybe move backwards, maybe. Let's see where, where, where T is at zero. All right, I'll put it over here. So if T is zero, what, what, what point will we get? Well, we would get X equal zero and Y would equal one. So we put this over here. So I, I think I have my, a little arc over here. All right, 
So I'm going to say, and by the way, it might be different than what I'm doing in the, on the, my notes, but here, yeah, each day is different. So I'm going to start at zero. And I'm going to go to pi over two. All right. But I want to emphasize to you what we're doing. We're going to rotate this thing like this. Now, this would just give me half of the sphere. And I want to get the whole sphere. So I'm going to say two of these guys. So let's write this down. And I, I need to get this radius thing here. And what's the radius here? It's going to be two pi. This is going to be circumference now. Two pi. What's the radius going to be? Well, it's going to be the y value, right? So it's cosine of t. Now I'm going to do the arc length. And that's going to be, let's see, x prime squared. Well, I haven't written x prime down yet, have I? Let's put that down. So x prime is going to be cosine t. And y prime is going to be sine or minus sine t, sorry about that. I got to square those guys. So what do you get over there? Cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Just doing the arc length, dt. All right, let's keep going. And we have a key to look at. So what do you get over here? Four pi, zero pi over two, cosine t, this is one dt. This is gonna be four pi sine t, zero to pi over two. Let's keep going. What do you get over there? Four pi, and then you get the sine of pi over two, which is one minus zero, which is four pi. All right, mistakes happen. Let's look at our K. And what we got over here, this. Now someone says they did a little different over here. Yeah, sometimes they do a different interval, but the bottom line is it's really not that bad to do. You might get confused with it, but you can always look back over these formulas if you have to, all right? So um, it says you should also try to do this using this over here. And it, I'm gonna say, you know, it's worth a try. It, it's just as easy. And let me, I, I, maybe I should put that down for you. So the, the understanding over here is that I could do this with the technique I've done in the past, which is not a bad idea. The equation of this thing is y equals the root of one minus x squared. And you remember I did my little strips over here and let's write this down then. You know, I got to write down, you know, dy dx. Oh boy, it's gonna be a tough one. That's going to be, let's see, uh, 2 root 1 minus x squared. Then you get minus 2x on top. And then I got to do 1 plus dy dx squared. This is old material, so I'm going through it pretty quickly. This is going to be 1 plus 4x squared over 4, 1 minus x squared. Well, the 4s cancel off. That makes it a little bit easier for me. And then you get 1 minus x squared. And what do you get on top? You get one minus x squared plus x squared. And let's see what you get over there. You get one over one minus x squared. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. Let's write this down now. That's your arc length. And we're going from minus one to one. And now I'm going to put my two pi r down. And what's the r? Well, it's just the y value. So that's the root of. And let's see if we can do that. Oh, I, I forgot to do the square root of that. I'm sorry. That's, this is the square root. Sorry about that. Otherwise, it's been really tough for me to do. Let's take a look at this. What do you get over here? Minus one to one, two pi dx. Let's do our antiderivative, two pi x minus one to one. This is two pi, one minus minus one, which is plus one, and you get four pi. We get the same result, all right? So that's important, all right? You get the same result, all right? 
So let's let's go to the next page. I don't think there is a next page actually. No, I think we're done. All right. So what, what, when I say we're done, I, we're not really done. You know, I kind of went through a couple of different derivations over there. It's new to you. Formulas are written down. Certainly, as you're doing homework, I'd suggest you have those formulas written down for you, so you don't have to keep rederiving them over and over again. But thank you for paying attention.